Look what I have. Bloodmarked Indigo Exclusive Edition by Tracy Dion. This came out today and I picked it up and I'm gonna do a reading vlog for it. Welcome to my channel, my name is Marley. I think I'm gonna do a spoiler reading vlog for this. I'm so excited, it is the sequel to Legendborn, which I think I read at the beginning of 2021 and I really, really loved it. So very excited to read this second book. Keep watching if you have also read the book and wanna see my thoughts and we can discuss it in the comments below. I'm gonna start this right now. whatever sunlight there is left for this update. I've been reading Bloodmarked. I started last night and then I read a bunch on the subway today going to work and I'm already 100 pages in and it is a great time. I'm loving it. So I'm assuming if you're here, you've already read the first one. If not, I'll just say it's about this young girl named Brie who goes to the school and ends up getting involved in this secret society that is based around Arthurian legends, King Arthur and the Round Table and Merlin. It basically has all these descendants of those original families. There's powers, there's a war going on with them and this like shadow born species. They're like monsters and demons and stuff. Anyways, I think I gave the first one a 4.5 and I think I removed 0.5 because I just found it a little hard to understand the world. I don't think like it was explained well enough. So I often struggled to like know what each of the terms meant and stuff like that. And I feel like Tracy is improving on that a bit. I wonder if she did get some of that feedback because I think in the first couple of chapters, she did a pretty good job of like, reminding us everything that happened in the last book and kind of like taking the time to explain what each thing meant. I do think there's a few things that are still confusing me, but that is kind of common in all fantasy. For me, I never totally understand everything. But like the one page, for example, I think it was page 11, where she kind of explains that a month ago, the spirit of King Arthur awakened into the world within Bree as his true descendant. And his awakening signaled that Kamlan, which is the ancient war between the legend born, the good guys, and the shadow born forces, the bad guys, was coming once again. So it happened before and now it's happening again. And then the next day, the regents, which is the current leadership of the Order of the Round Table, instructed them to do nothing. They were to go on as if, you know, the world was normal, which makes sense for, for the book that they just have to kind of go back to normal so our story can kind of continue here. While they gather intel about the enemies and about Nick's capture, Nick was her love interest in the last book who got captured. He was the one who they thought was gonna be Arthur, but is actually Lancelot. And he was captured by a well-known loyal servant. So there was a character who like betrayed them last book. So basically Brie is being kept under lock and key because she's like this special, person the special sky on or whatever so i understand like who the legend born are who the shadow born are i understand certain terms but then there's other terms i just don't know and then this regent i'm kind of confused about who each of them are even though there is this sort of thing in the front of the book but i'm like this isn't helping enough because there's these weird words like mage sensual I do know what a king's mage is. I know what the mage guard is. So that's Selwyn. So Selwyn is my favorite character. That's him. And there was a hint of a romance between these two, but they're giving Major Damon and Elena vibes, which is like my OTP. And so at the beginning of this book, they're still fighting because like she is just going against like the rules that he's setting for her to protect her. And so I was loving their scenes together. But now Selwyn is like MIA and we had this new character come come in named Lark who's protecting Brie, which at first I'm like, are we having another love interest? I was definitely getting that vibe, but now there is just a comment that he's probably gay because he was like blushing at William. So I think he's actually gonna be like a love interest for William, which is like Brie's bestie and like a healer and honestly one of the best characters in the book. <laughs> but yeah, I'm kind of sad now Selwyn's gone and basically the regents are blaming everything on him for everything that happened with the betrayal from Nick's 
dad and that other guy that was evil so it's like kind of annoying it's a thing that we see in a lot of books it's reminding me of, you know mortal instruments where like the government in their little society is evil and our only good people are basically our main crew so yeah it is taking me a, a minute to get readjusted to this world i am kind of remembering these characters again but it's it's still taking a bit for me to remember all of them there's also this thing called root craft or something which is basically the same as ether which is what they call their magic so there's just a lot of things that are like niche to this society this fantasy world that i'm just getting acclimated to again but i really was missing reading fantasy if you watch my channel you'll see i have not read much fantasy lately but it's it really is like one of my favorite genres i really enjoy it anyway this is a rambly update i'll try and update maybe every 100 pages it is a 500 page book so i was kind of worried when i got it i'm like this is big but i really don't think it will take me long because i'm really enjoying it all right time to cook dinner. Guys, this sun really be setting quick now with the daylight saving time. So sorry if it's too dark of an update but i have gotten 200 pages into blood marked can i just say something that i'm liking about this is how they call brie king like even though normally you know girls would be called queen when it comes to royalty they still call her king and i kind of love that I'm like just going against gender norms gender names because she is the descendant of king arthur I don't know it'd be kind of fun things i didn't like about this section you know it's good it's good but it's like infuriating if you read the book you know so we know cell got like taken captive selwyn my fave and they're saying it's because we're locked in jail or whatever and they're saying it's because his demon self is gonna like overtake him which like happens with merlin sometimes but it's just so annoying because it's like it's not they just want him like out of the picture and the reason is because they were trying to trap brie they're doing this whole ritual that they need to do for some reason and then they end up actually kidnapping brie i'm saying them i mean the order the regents whatever the heck and then they are drugging her and like asking her all these questions and basically just trying to like hide her away and lie to all the rest of the legend born saying that they're just like protecting her but really they're just trying to like have complete control even though brie is like the the king the crown sky on or whatever they're calling her so it's really frustrating and then there was this really like kind of impactful scene where Bree's kind of going off to them and saying like basically if i was a white man would you be treating me this way and the answer is no and just calling them out for their racism and for not acknowledging like the reason why she is the crown sky on which is because king arthur's descendant actually assaulted her ancestor so that is how she got into the bloodline was through like a violent act and they won't acknowledge that it just was just so frustrating having this order the regents whatever like being these true villains and thank god thank god as so many of these ya fantasy series have there is like a rebel group or whatever a resistance that ends up saving brie it's people who you know actually believe in her and in the king and is willing to go against the order so her friend alice is in there and then a couple other people help her escape thank god and i'm just sitting here with like where's selwyn because with this cover and with it being the second book in a series i was just hoping for the new moon effect and if you, if you don't know what i mean by that it's like when the main love interest is gone like edward and new moon so then it's time for the other guys time to shine aka jacob or in this case selwyn and that's like a very common trope in like trilogies for that to happen and selwyn was just like out of the picture right so i was like what's going on here but they saved selwyn now too so i'm thinking now it's going to be like our actual group of good characters trying to save nick who is still captured and the order actually doesn't want to save him they actually want to kill him so it's just a whole mess so i think the rest of the book is going to get better because it's going to be like no more regent order people and it's going to be our actual main characters and i'm hoping there'll be more of them so i think that's the main update for now and i'll check back in at the 300 page mark unless something really crucial happens before then 
Okay, so I am almost 300 pages in. I have hit part three, which is called Control. And this last chapter, I like couldn't breathe. I couldn't read. It was because of a moment or a scene between Brie and Selwyn. It was chapter, hold on, chapter 29, favorite chapter so far. And I've already compared the two of them to Damon and Elena from The Vampire Diaries. And this scene was just like screaming Delena for me. Brie like walks into her room and then he's just there and it kind of startles her which like happens so much in Damon and Elena scenes. And then it's just like this huge tension filled scene where like he's like smirking and stuff. And then she's all like flustered with her feelings. And then they get up close in proximity because she like kind of helps bandage his wound. And it was just like the tension was rising. And I was like, oh my God, like is something gonna happen? And it didn't, but it's like, they have this like unspoken thing and they're just not acknowledging it. Like the feelings between them. That's like my favorite thing. Like I do not get like this about ships lately, about romantic relationships, but like this is it, like these two. So that was just so good. And like, they have to be end game. Like they just have to because Brie and Nick, which is like the more canon couple, like they can't be together because the bloodlines are not supposed to mix between the knights. So she's obviously Arthur and he's Lancelot. Like they can't mix the bloodlines. So they're kind of like forbidden to be together. Um, hello. So I really hope I really hope they're endgame. But yeah, I'm just loving this. Okay, what else happened? The main thing was that they, that our main crew went to this little safe house, but turns out one of the people that they thought they could trust uh, betrayed them and brought this demon person there to kill Bree, so they had to fight them. It was this whole big dramatic thing. It actually was very interesting. Basically, Bree is like, I'm ready to fight and train and also find Nick along the way because she's been like doing this little power where she can go into memories and communicate with Nick somehow because they're connected through Lancelot and Arthur and they even kissed. So Tracy, she's still trying to hold on to that ship, but it's like, who's shipping them? Like, let me know in the comments. Does anyone actually like Bree with Nick? Like, I don't hate him. I don't hate them, but it's just not it, you know? But then now all her friends, like Will, Selwyn, and Alice are telling her, you cannot, it's too dangerous. You're too important. You need to like stay hidden and protected. So this is just like the common theme throughout the whole book basically, because she's so powerful. And if she dies, then the whole Arthur line dies. And that's a big deal. So we'll see, like, I hope she fights that and like does get to leave this little safe house because or else that would be boring. Unless Selwyn stays there with her. Unless it's just the two of them that stay hidden together. Then I support it. But yeah, I'm, I'm still loving this obviously. <laughs> of love is blind was <laughs> oh my gosh okay i have read another 100 pages of blood marked i'm still living laughing and loving but there has been some real drama in this last section some real tea actually let me put this up a bit i feel like i'm crouching so basically our little crew decides to go to this place that brie was told she could find help and it's this little like demon bar like it's kind of like a fun bar vibe where there's a bunch of people with powers there and we later find out that it's people who have like traded and bought their powers and it, as i said it's like a demon bar while they're there it definitely was giving me like percy jackson vibes where they're like on this quest and then they have this little hiccup where they like momentarily get kidnapped by this like god and they have to like escape and like trick their way out of it because brie and Cell accidentally like get into this fight with one of the patrons there and then the owner of the bar valak comes out and is like you guys owe me for like causing drama in my bar and he seems like he's like evil at first he's like a demon like broker selling people powers or whatever he kind of takes them hostage and he's like interrogating them Bree's doing her best to keep her secret about her being arthur's sky on you know she's being more open about the fact that she has this blood craft magic or whatever 
Anyways, also they end up exposing Selwyn. So this is a big thing for, you know, Brie and Selwyn, which is clearly what I care about the most in this book. So basically, he has been mesmering her. And that is like the mind control that they can do. Kind of like compelling in the Vampire Diaries. And normally Brie can like block mesmer, but Selwyn has been mesmering her to see him differently. So see him as he normally looks, but really he looks really bad like he is he is actually succumbing to his demonhood and his demonia they call it which i think is so funny but i think i mentioned before in this vlog like merlins can give in to their demon side because they are partially demon you know people are telling her that selwyn is going to do that because he is away from nick and away from his oath his oath was to protect nick so him being away from his oath is making him like succumb to the demon side of him because of that his you know his fangs are getting longer and he's like looking more demonic but he was mesmering her to see him as his normal self to trick her so she didn't realize how close he was to becoming a full demon or whatever so brie is like super betrayed and then she's like oh so every time he was like getting close to me or looking me deeply in the eye or like touching me that was just to do this influence over me and it was all fake and all my feelings for him that i've had have been fake no like no it doesn't affect the feelings right it's like ugh. like as a reader you're like no like that's not it girl like it's a betrayal of him lying but like those feelings are still real anyways so that happens they end up managing to get out of there speaking with some other people who have the root craft magic or whatever more of Bree's friends now where are they going oh I don't, I don't know eventually anyways they decide to go to actually find nick because brie has another little talking with him i always feel like i have to hold this up but like it's heavy brie has another little talk with him through their dreams or their mind and she finds out where he is so the last thing i read was like them going there and then they end up witnessing nick actually escaping and killing someone but like basically killing them in cold blood like it wasn't even in self-defense it was like in revenge because they killed his dad so then instead of running to them to escape with them he runs away from them probably because he feels so guilty and he like doesn't want them to be in danger or something but brie is like heartbroken because you know she still loves nick and also i'm like hey selwyn needs to be near you nick like he's literally becoming a demon and i know at some point sel did tell her that like he was only mesmering her and it wasn't affecting his feelings like he wasn't doing anything to her brain of how she thought about him it was just how she was seeing him so i was like thank god for like setting that straight and now we're just at this moment where like Erebus or whatever he's one of the like evil people in their government from the beginning he has found them and oh Cell has had these things dampening his powers this whole time but now Brie just cut them off him with her magic so finally finally Selwyn is free to use his full power and basically they're gonna take on Erebus but Brie and Selwyn are together so that's what I wanted I kind of wanted them to go off together so now I just have basically the last 100 pages oh it's like 550 pages so i have like 150 pages left potentially could finish it today because i'm not really doing much but definitely will finish this weekend <laughs> beautiful angsty tension filled scene like tracy's really dragging this out and i'm loving it i'm eating it up <laughs> to the final part of the book the last 50 pages it's been a roller coaster absolutely basically let me just get this out of the way brie and sal finally talked about their feelings finally kind of like admitted to each other in the last book he had called her cariad which was like a welsh term that she didn't know what it meant and this whole book she's been like wondering what it meant and it's like as the reader it's like you know that it meant love like you just know and she finally figures out like the the term does mean like darling sweetheart or love so she finally knows that like he does love her they kiss it's a beautiful scene but at the same time like as a shipper i just always prefer like the tension leading up to 
the moment where they admit their feelings and then the, when they finally do I, I don't like it as much as like the tension before but still loved it love seeing my ship sail other things that have happened I'm feeling a little bit like this is very much like a bridge book like a filler book like a lot of second books in trilogies are I just feel like it's mostly exposition on the world and the magic system and I don't really know if we're gonna have any sort of like resolutions we're just like building and building on this world and I assume most of uh, the climactic stuff is going to happen in the next book because we find out about this other villain obviously we know about the order by this point but we find out about this devourer or like the hunter and he is this ancient like shadowborn creature i guess that is always hunting Bree's ancestors and just sucking up the power like devouring it so we find out that he is potentially like tracking them whenever Bree uses her powers it's dangerous because he could find her that way which was enough for me of a motive like for him but then we find out this extra thing through Valak because you know how I said he's like a demon traitor or whatever he ends up finding out that Bree's ancestor Vera who started this whole thing she actually made a deal with a devil and that's been like a curse that's been on Bree's family this whole time it's not just that they have Arthur running through their veins it's also that there's some sort of deal with the devil where like that's why the mothers keep dying prematurely the hunter is like the the, the demon that made the deal so he always like devours their magic and like kills them or something so that's like an extra reason that he is like after Bree which I didn't really think that was like needed necessarily but okay like we're just getting so much magic stuff that sometimes I do think it's a lot like I get it it's a fantasy book you're gonna have all these different elements but it's a lot and so that's where the term blood marked comes from is that that's what it means like she's blood marked because of this curse so that's where that comes from there's just a lot of layers to this magic system and to what's going on with Brie and so it's a lot and it's a lot of like info dumping same as the first book because we're just getting so much more about this world but I for the most part can wrap my head around it it's just a lot so yeah then there's the moment with Selwyn and then now we're having what I assume was one of the more big battles for the book where Brie is finally letting in Arthur she's letting Arthur kind of take over her and together they are fighting Erebus who again caught up with them then with Arthur kind of controlling her body she accidentally just killed Alice I'm pretty sure she like smacked her thinking she was an enemy and now her body has gone limp and like I'm really scared she's killed Alice her best friend because that's been such an important relationship in this book it's it's so special I really love Alice as a character as well she's like the one human in the situation that's just sort of getting dragged along but like doing really well and has been really smart and stuff throughout the book and this is just devastating this is devastating like I really hope she's not dead and this last section is called only a king and I just just glance at the next chapter and it seems like it's from Arthur's point of view so he has like taken over Bree's body like she's gone so another villain Arthur himself so I don't know what's gonna happen here it's very dramatic it's very upsetting we also had kind of a nice scene between Nick, Selwyn, and Bree all in their little memory world where they go back into a memory between Arthur, Lancelot, and Merlin which has a Merlin fan like the tv show Merlin on BBC it was nice to see and it's funny because I always shipped Merlin and Arthur in that show and it's like now I ship Merlin and Arthur in this book because Bree's like Arthur and Selwyn's Merlin kind of fun fact but yeah it's very upsetting right now what's happening I think the last check-in is just gonna be when I have finished the book at this point but it's amazing I think I'm gonna do a five stars I think you guys have seen my like passion and like interest in this book so let's see what this last section has in store all right I finished the book guys I don't have any like super passionate thoughts about the last little bit but I think I'm gonna stick with my five star rating prediction because just overall I enjoyed this book so much I do think it was a little bit of a filler book like I said or like really just building the world and stuff and hyping up these different villains that we had and like building on Bree's power and stuff like that basically what happened was like Cell and Nick came together to save Bree they ended up going into their little I forgot what they call it where they go into the memory of Arthur Lancelot and Merlin Selwyn basically ends up sucking up all of her like power to save her or something bring her back to consciousness so she's the one that takes over her body Body, and then by sucking up so much power he makes himself basically become even more of a demon like succumb to the demonia or whatever so really upsetting i feel like next book is gonna be about bringing him back to his humanhood and like brie maybe saving him with their feelings for each other or something like that um 
it's really sad but beautiful that he would give up his life for her basically when she comes back like alice is also in a coma so at least she's not totally dead i do just have a feeling like one of the main three is gonna die like nick brie or selwyn in the next book i feel like maybe nick i don't know and then basically we have this reveal of who this hunter is it is erebus who is a character we already know in the order so i like that we had that little twist although i don't really know how brie figured it out it's not like i saw a lot of hints throughout it but she figured it out and i guess the hunter like wants her to die but wants her to die when she's like at maximum power so she makes this deal with him which has been like a theme in this book right like making deals with devils or demons so just basically he's gonna train her so she gets to like her maximum power which is what she wants and then she's basically saying like you can have me like you can kill me after that oh no actually what she's asking is for him to like bring selwyn to his mom that's right to natasha who we keep hearing about and she survived demonia or whatever so brie is basically like doing a sacrifice for selwyn for him to be saved by his mom hopefully and she's gonna go with the hunter aka erebus who's like the main villain which kind of works because i was like okay we have two villains we have the order and then we have the hunter but they're actually the same <laughs> kind of so yeah so Bree's gonna be with him in the beginning of the next book i guess that's the cliffhanger we're left with so a lot did happen but at the same time like there's so much more that needs to happen i know i didn't like include every single thing in this reading vlog and review because it's just so hard to even like understand or talk about all of the magic stuff going on here but i absolutely love this book as I said before, let me know your thoughts in the comments about any of these storylines or characters, what you think is going to happen in the next book, and what you rated this one. Um, subscribe for more videos. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I had such a great time reading this. They are definitely OTP for me, and I can't wait to see them in the next book. Okay, bye.